Hey everyone, it's Diane here from Deco Easy, the channel of me and my mother-in-law, Jenny. Thank you so much for stopping by. We can't take wait to take you with us on a new DIY adventure. Are you ready? Let's go and start. Um, today, of course, we're going to work with Jenny dogs. Jenny and I buy these. These are pretty big. Uh, how long are they? Yeah, seven centimeters. We buy them at Action. That is a similar shop to Dollar Tree. And uh, this package costs three euros. So then you get 60 of these blocks. And uh, I also have this, a wooden heart that we got from the garden center a long time ago. I bought several ones. I also made uh, other DIYs with it and I still have a new one here. Uh, I have an extra crafting mat because I'm going to paint. And oh, let me lay this over here. And I'll do the painting with this blackboard or chalkboard paint. Uh, deep black paint, also from Action, including this brush from the Action. And uh, yeah, I'm going to start painting uh, blocks because I want to have prints on the blocks and I want to put them in the heart. I will show you in the next step how I'm going to do that so then I can measure how many blocks I need. What I don't need, I put that back in the package and I reuse them for a next time. So here we have the heart. And first let me remove this price tag, at, at least the tag, because the price isn't upon it. I checked it, but it really ain't there anymore. So that will be rubbish. What I want to do, let me check. Yeah, both sides are the same. Uh, there are some staples in here. I want to cover that up. What I'm going to do is just put blocks in it like this yeah well something like that and then over here just random like so or so and that side again just going to oh there's a big fly here <laughs> that attacked me in the face um just some random blocks yeah, how can we do that? Something like this. And then once over here to cover up those, yeah, well, not so nice staples. That is a little bit annoying. Yeah, I really don't fancy that sort of stuff. You can do it just as you like. I thought there was a fun idea to do it like this. So a few more. Well, let's say something like this. That's what we need. We'll just pick six extra because we're going to do something with it later. And I keep them apart. Six blocks. And yeah, well, let's say two or just one extra in case we, uh, yeah, I'm redoing not the exact same thing. And there might be some space left. Now, let me count. This one is extra. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Oops. 16, 17, 18 blocks and one extra. That will be enough for me. Um, I'm going to put this away and these blocks here get, go back into the can again. And with this, I'm going to start painting. Okay, now open up the can. I already shaped the paint. Oh, just, yeah, I thought I like I hit. Oh no, I'm throwing the lid through the paint. Ah, clumsy me. Uh, where shall we put it? I think just on the crafting mat. Oh no, it's already on my finger too. I didn't even start painting and now I'm already covered up in two places. Okay, put them around here or let me lay them on top. Just a little peekaboo for you so you can see what I'm doing. This paint is thick. Don't know if you can see properly. But it's just like thick gravy. Now, what I'm going to do is paint uh, three sides. 
not one of the flat sides. And you got to be careful because on some of those stones or blocks is text. There's always, in at least in these packages, one block with text. Really don't use that on the front side of your DOI because even when you paint it with this black paint, you're going to see it. First, I always have a lot of this stuff. I first always start with the edges. And then don't forget to do one big brush strike towards one side to just make sure that the paint covers everything in a nice and thin layer. Now, let me see, where shall I put these? I'll think here. Now quickly remove the finger, like that, underneath. Dab off some extra excess paint. Now I'm holding it with one finger, so I can paint the top section. And carefully don't push hard, go to this side. And I'll finish it off like that. Hopefully there isn't any paint dripping. I repeat that on the other blocks as well. I'm going to speed up this process a little bit for you, so you can check out what I'll be doing. I'm busy with my last block painting, and look what I found there, the one with text. So I'm not going to paint this side, but only this side, and I wanted to show you the text. Really, you're going to see it through the design, even though you're using black paint. Okay, last one for now. There. I'm going to switch the crafting mats. This one will go over here so the blocks can dry. I'll put this one around here with the paint can also here because now I'd like to paint the heart too. However, now I'm seeing this, I don't think I will. No, I'm not going to do that. I will use bee wax and I still have to grab that myself. So I'm going to do that. Cleaning my fingers is the next business because uh, bee wax makes this a little bit more in a warmer look, I think. Yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do if that is looking fine. If not, then it, I will be using the black paint. Um, we'll see. Now here is the bee wax. A big jar from the drugstore really dark and shimmering and I always have a bag of several brushes that I use for the bee wax because you can't get the stuff out of the um, brush once you've been using it. Now I'll just try it upon the back side. If it doesn't look nice I'll turn this yeah this thing to the back and I'll be using the black paint to cover up the rest. What I personally like to do is to have to mix it a little bit because once you're not using it the uh, how do you call that? The really fluid stuff goes to the surface. Look, this is what comes off. Always carefully want to dab off the excess bee wax. You can do that in a jar, but also in the lid. Now let me see how it looks. Always paint um, the direction of the wood, so the stripes in the wood are up this way. So I'm not going to do that, but this. Will it look good? I think it does, huh? Yeah, I think we'll keep it this way. Okay, now. Let me brush back and forth. And the last thing I'll do is just wiping it this way. But doing it in circles like this makes me sure that I cover up every part of the wood. Sometimes there are really big, strong circles in the wood that you can't reach so easily. So I'll just go around that. goes faster too. Don't paint the cord. Here, for example. 
look how quickly the bee wax really, yeah, the wood is really soaking up the bee wax, which is good because that's what we want. Here you can see the difference. This is such a more nicer, warmer color. I'm going to do the rest as well. Voila, here is the stained heart. Now I'm going to do the following thing. Um, bringing in the glue, uh, yeah, the wood glue. And I want to make some sort of sign like this because yeah i think that was the diy will do some good um i think the easiest way to do that is first of all let's get rid of the cap use the entrance clear so we can yeah pour the paint uh the glue it is um, let me turn it around because i might get my clothes yeah i put on a neat shirt that's a dump for me but wash my hands and i will change um However, this has to dry, and this one has to dry for a long time as well. What I like to do is prepare the blocks on the sides that you need to glue, and then add the glue, let it stay in there for a couple of minutes, and then afterwards you can just push the things together. Make sure that this glue dries. I think for at least right now here, we have high humidity, I think two hours at least, but the longer the better. Just put it everywhere, and uh, yeah, then I will push everything together, just as you saw, so you get some sort of sign idea. Oops. Because I can also use my hot glue gun, but this stuff is more or stronger than the hot glue that I use. So I pr prefer this glue. Don't forget to do the sides really well because there might be a lot of tension on those sides and we want them to be covered up in glue completely. There we are. Don't forget to put the cap back on. I think I forgot it right now with this can about four times. And then you can really open up with a needle the whole can. Um, I think you'll be seeing me the next day because it's already pretty late in the evening and um, this stuff has to dry especially the bee wax so I'm going to let that dry overnight um, maybe I'll be back tonight to do something with just painted blocks I don't know otherwise you'll see me the next day well, yeah one advice that I forgot you to give is now everything is glued but you still here see the glue I'd like to grab the box and tear this one here off and then you get some sort of scraper, which you can easily let flow on top of those blocks. Now the glue is a little bit more, you know, what shall we say, flattened out. Now, of course, this will be the back side. There we are. You can throw that away. And I uh, suggest that you clearly move it a little bit because, as you can see, there gets a lot of glue underneath. And once that dries up, you can really see that well. Now let this dry, and I'll be back next for the next step. Hey, back again. Still tonight. And I decided I wanted to transfer prints to those painted blocks. And therefore, I have several printables. I have dots, plain brown, and also fall leaves. Um, what I want to do is cut them out, and therefore I use a sharp knife, or you can just use scissors, but I think this works easier for me, and I get a sharper line. Why am I cutting it out? So I make sure that I won't put uh, blocks on the parts where there is only white paper, because especially when you turn the pages over. Um, pretty hard to see where the print ends, especially in the, at the light leaves one. Okay. 
The last piece. Always the trickiest. It might, yeah, there it goes. It might rupture. Always somehow on the last cut. Is it okay? Not completely. Yeah, well, these are so super small parts. I'll leave it to that. I'm going to cut out the other ones as well. And then I will transfer those prints to the blocks. Okay, time to transfer those prints to the blocks. Just sort them all so I'm sure that I got everything in the right place. No, this one doesn't matter. If they aren't in the same direction, for this one it will. Or does this one still able to fit in there? Don't have to place them too close together, but try to do this ones closest to here. Yeah, then we have a problem here because I don't want to touch the other paper. And we turn it over. Problem solved. Good. What I have here are two brushes, but I think I'll only need one. So I'll start off with the smallest one and glue. Oh, that thing is wobbling up and down. And I have glue also from Action. This is just Mod Podge, but then 17 times cheaper. And uh, yeah, let's put that. I think we'll start here on those blocks. Just lay them down in front of me and then just going to pour. Oh, they don't shake it well. Guess not. Can hear it. On the colored parts. Now, yeah, this is annoying. <laughs> oh, there is a thick piece. Wait a minute. Sometimes that happens and I have no idea why. There is really nothing stuck. Good. There we go. Try it again. Does it go better? Otherwise, I'm just going... No, it won't. Then I'm just grabbing another pot of glue because I still have that. Okay, I tested it and this one works better. So, still going to pour some glue, but not on the last one because if there is still enough glue left on my brush. I can always fit that in later. Okay, now just add the glue to the complete block, especially well on the edges. And now you might be wondering why did we paint it first? Because you might still see some blank spaces of wood um, when the image starts to curl up. At least that's my experience. Sometimes that happens. Doesn't always have to be. So better be prepared. And then just add one layer of extra. Now I have too much. I'm going to transfer it to that one. And then you have a really much more high end looking DIY. Trust me. Yeah, this one definitely has too much glue. Luckily, I didn't put on glue to the last block. I know myself, I always pour too much glue upon objects that I craft. Okay, the last one. Oops, I'm gluing myself as well. I think we're there. Let me check if I have everything. I believe I have. Now transfer them carefully to the paper here and let that dry. I'm going to let it dry overnight, but let it dry for a couple of hours at least. You might want to speed up the drying process, then I suggest turning it over so the glued side can dry faster. And this is the last one. Okay, I'm going to repeat the other steps on the other prints, and then I have six of every color. Time to grab your knife because we're going to cut these off. Well, let's start with oops, 
the one with the polka dots. Just make sure that the knife is long enough or just use scissors, that is totally up to you. And personally, I like to first cut them into smaller pieces. And then I cut off the restraints that are still there. So just like this, carefully go around with a knife. And make sure that everything is nice and neat. If necessary, you can also just use scissors, but I personally like the knife because I can cut more precise, but it sometimes might happen that the whole thing yeah, will rips apart and then scissors will be better. Now I hope that we have a neat piece, not completely, <laughs> some pieces are a little bit hard to get off, almost there. And here is still a piece that needs to be cut it loose. And then you have your block with your print. Now repeat these steps for the rest of the blocks as well. And then you're good to go. Hey, all the blocks are ready to start gluing them on the heart. I just arranged them in a way which I think is fun. But of course, feel free to do your own design. Um, I like to use glue. Um, I'm in doubt if I want to use the Mod Podge fake glue or the hot glue gun, but I think both will work. Just pick whatever you like and uh, yeah, I'm going to start gluing, let it dry well and then we're going to add a little detail. Here is the heart. Doesn't it look cute together with all those colors in brown? I think it looks very classy. Now, I want to add something extra, and therefore I have the wooden, um, yeah, well, sign actually, that we made in the beginning. And I'm going to paint that one black with the same blackboard paint as I used for the side of the blocks. And I'm going to make white letters upon it, but that is the next step. First, let's do the painting. Now we wait until this is dry. I'm going to clean the brush and uh, yeah, tidy up a little bit here because there is a little bit of some mess which you can't see on screen, of course, but I still have lots of those, uh, you know, leftovers from the paper cutting. So I'm going to clean that and then I will be back, hopefully, with the letters. Okay, the sign is dry and the hot glue gun is ready. So time to start gluing away. Just add some glue on the back of the letters. Doesn't have to be that much. They're not that heavy. I always try to do as less as possible or as necessary. To avoid, you know, these big drippers that you might come and see when it's, you know, when the glue starts going underneath the letters and you some sort of splashes underneath. And that's a sign that you've used too much. And it mostly happens to me, so that says more about me, I guess. Okay, the last one. There we are. I fall. Time to remove some spider webs that are here and there. And I think that we're good to go. And here it is. Just attached the sign to the heart. Isn't it a cutie? All those prints combined on the stained heart. Here you see detail of the sign. Here you see detail of the prints. 
in combination with the black edges of the blocks here and the wood stained heart with the bee wax. We are curious what you think about this DIY, so we can't wait to see what you read, uh, wrote in the comment section. Thank you for watching! That was it for today. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you for your time. We hope you had fun and we hope to see you next in the next video back again. Bye everyone! Take care!